Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that the summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, but this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we begin tonight this pilgrimage, and I just want to talk maybe for a few minutes about this concept of us going on a pilgrimage to pray together, to be in this time that we can worship, be in this time that we pray. Uh, I'd like to just start with my own testimony with it. Uh, the last time I was here was like 11 months ago, and uh, you know I've, I've been a priest for five years, and I, I absolutely love being a priest, and if I had to... Um, find any way to describe what it's like to be here and to pray in the Holy Land, I would say that it's like the fifth gospel. And, you know, I've heard that phrase from other people, but it really and truly is the fifth gospel. And we're going to open that book of this gospel this week in, in a really special and unique way. And I hope that we all allow the Lord to touch us in some way. You know, I, I really do think that the Lord's got some powerful miracles in store for all of us. You know, all these miracles happen to confirm him right over there. But, you know, the Savior is with us, right? He's especially, he's with us in his word, and he's with us in his Eucharist. And he does want to do powerful things in us and through us. Uh, I was getting ready to give a talk this summer. I was giving a talk on Divine Mercy, just preparing for this year of mercy. I'm so excited about the year of mercy. And uh, I was praying to Jesus about his mercy. I was going to give the talk on a... Tuesday, and it was a Monday, and I was praying to Jesus about his mercy, and at some point in my prayer, I just said, Jesus, I want to go back to the Holy Land, <laughs> and Jesus said, okay, you can go back, and the next day, I was getting ready to give the talk, and my phone rings, and it's Steve Ray, and he says, hey, Father Dan, Steve Ray, do you want to come back with me to the Holy Land, and I said, well, God sure does work in mysterious ways. <laughs> anyway, I think, though, that the Lord has got powerful things for all of us that he wants to do. But we are, we're all coming here from all different backgrounds. We're all coming here from, you know, different parts of the country, different parts of the world even. Uh, but we're all here together as one family. We're all here together to be followers of Jesus. So we just have to open ourselves to whatever he wants to do in our lives this week. You know, it could be something as simple as sitting and saying quiet prayer here by the Sea of Galilee. It could be uh, reading the Sermon on the Mount in the place where he gave it. It could be celebrating Mass in the tomb of Jesus, the place where he rose from the dead and he comes out of the tomb for all of us in Holy Communion. This place is a place of miracles. This place is a place of transformation. 2,000 years ago, the Savior came, the Lord Jesus came, that he might convert hearts. And today he still wants to convert hearts. And even if we are believers, there's still so much conversion, right? We don't, we're not Baptists. We don't believe that we're once saved, always saved. We believe that salvation is ongoing, that the Lord always wants to work on our hearts, and that he always wants to deepen our faith. And I think the fact that you're here says something about your faith already. But now we have to allow the Lord to do the work. You know, there's going to be chances where I, where I think 
I could complain about this or this or this, but maybe just to surrender. And I think that's a good word for it. Like, what am I supposed to do in my relationship with the Lord this week? Is surrender to the working of the Lord. To spend time with Him in His Word. To spend time in prayer. And to spend time having fun. I think this is what the Lord's calling us to. This, this inner conversion. Because there's going to be so many grace-filled moments. But we have to be open to the working of the Holy Spirit. Open. And just like the Blessed Mother who says, Yes, let it be done to me according to thy word. And the word was made flesh in her. So too, if we had in that same vein say, Yes, Lord, may your will be done in me. The Lord will be made flesh in us in a different way than the Blessed Mother. But yes, still she will be made flesh. Still he will be made flesh in us. Still our conversion will be ongoing. And we'll take graces away from this place that we had never expected. But only if we open our hearts to the Lord and his working in our lives. Amen. Hi, my name is Jesse Romero. I'm here with Steve Ray, and this is day one. We're in the Sea of Galilee. Can you imagine 2,000 years ago when God became a man, he walked on this sea. He walked on water. Well, guess what? Just a few minutes ago, Jesus Christ again came to the Sea of Galilee because we had Mass celebrated for us right here by our good Padre. Hello. And, and you know what? What a blessing that Jesus Christ lives again. And he was here right now. Day one, Steve Ray tour with Jesse Romero and Padre. God bless you. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. See you later.